Hey, everybody. Um, so as you know, uh, we don't have class today. It is uh, presumably you're watching this on Wednesday, November 14th. Um, you may be watching it early and that's fine. Um, as a reminder, we're having this online lecture and class uh, because my husband's having surgery. Hooray! And I am in Cleveland um, as you're watching this. On Monday, you have uh, you had class uh, with Dr. White and there at the very end of class, uh, she talked a little bit or had you guys start to brainstorm, what do you do when you have writer's block? And so especially when we're getting into bigger papers like the one that we're doing um, here at the end, this argument paper, there's a lot of moments where you just kind of run out of words, right? And um, a lot of you still do the procrastination thing, right? I know you. Uh, and you try and hammer it out the night before. But the longer the papers get, the harder it is to, to pull that off, okay? You may have been able to get away with that when it was a thousand words in that classic five paragraph essay I'm always harping about. But now that we're into, you know, over 2,000 words and you're looking at seven, eight, nine pages, it, you just, it's really hard to do. And so what I um, want to talk about a little bit today is things that you can ask yourself when you get stuck, uh, particularly in this case in the argument paper. But I think a lot of these questions would really work for just about any paper that you're going to write. So I know I don't normally do PowerPoints, but it's, we're stuck with it because that's what we got. And I try to pick something pretty. So hooray, it's pretty. Uh, okay, here we go. So let's see here. Okay, so uh, the first question um, that you kind of need to ask yourself when you get stuck is what about this makes sense? Or more simply, am I making sense, right? If, especially in an argument paper or a position paper, which let's face it, we've talked about how rhetoric is everywhere. Everything is an argument, even that grocery list. Um, everything you have to ask yourself, am I making sense? And it's hard when you're in the midst of things to know whether you are, but if you can pause and think about that, you might find that you have more to say. One of the things that somebody mentioned um, early on in the semester is that they have, um, when we talked about writing process, and we're talking like week two or whatever, um, somebody mentioned that they have uh, some online resource like Google read their document to them so that they can hear it, right? Um, so one option you have is simply to read it aloud. Take the paragraph that you're working on pause and think, am I making sense? Read it aloud. And if you're not, you know, highlight, mark it up, whatever, um, and, and try again. Okay. Next question. Um, what about this does make sense? Where is the confusion? Um, you get yourself so turned around sometimes with argument papers, like you've got a position and you're trying to like, you know, give the balanced approach and, and, and that kind of thing, all the stuff we've talked about, but you get kind of spun out, right? And you're out of words. Um, asking yourself, where is the confusion? And really thinking, where is the confusion? Where am I confused? Where did I get off track? And marking it is one way of, of kind of getting yourself back on track. Another thing that I kind of put in parentheses here is um, my old trick of actually cutting and pasting. So you print it out, you cut it up, you read it aloud, you mix it up, right? All of those things are going to give you a new view of um, the the document, the paper, the paper, the paragraph that you're working on. Okay. Um, one of the things, uh, the third bullet point, um, things to keep in mind is just why am I writing? What are the questions I'm trying to answer? Um, who am I trying to convince? And if you lose sight of that, it's really hard to keep writing. Um, it's really hard to kind of rein yourself in and not kind of fly off the deep end if you're more wordy, right? But if you've got writer's block, you don't have enough words, right? So what are the questions you're trying to answer? Um, or what, what um, point are you trying to make, right? And if you have that point and you're doing good on that point, you're out of words, let's look at some more. Okay, so next slide. Well, it didn't work. Here it is, okay. Um, wait, hang on. There it is, okay. Um, one of the things that I find really helpful is uh, always keeping that thesis in the foreground, right? Um, kind of putting a post-it note right on your forehead or in this case on your monitor or your laptop. Um, and then remember that that wave line that we did uh, with there's the, the triangle, right? Um, and then the thesis is a line and then it, and it waves, right? Um, how does this paragraph go back to your thesis? So if you get stuck, one of the things to ask yourself is, am I sticking to my thesis, okay? Another thing um, to think about is if, if you're not sticking to your thesis, do you need to change your writing or do you need to change your thesis, okay? 
which one of those two things seems more natural to you that it's going to help you keep writing and whatever that one is do that okay so don't try and force yourself to stick to a thesis when you're finding it much more generative to keep going kind of a little bit tangential but but purposefully change your thesis to go with where you're going okay don't be afraid to change the thesis don't be afraid to um, change the writing right it's it's a little bit nebulous but um, make sure that you're going the direction that you need to go and the, the way that you're actually getting words produced, okay? Um, and then again, asking yourself what information is most important to the argument. Come back to the basics of your thesis and think, I need to make sure I cover these four points, otherwise my argument isn't going to make sense, right? So go back to those and, and see how each paragraph is lining up with those things. And if you answer that question, you might be able to get more words. So if you've covered all the main points, um, are you supporting them well? Um, do you find places that need more evidence, right? Or is it too much of you saying, I think, blah, 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 or do you need more support? Remember, a position paper requires support. And so go back to your sources and find a way to incorporate them more. I'm not saying to go and do the, let's copy this whole paragraph and shove it into my essay. Yeah, don't do that. Um, instead, make sure that you're, you're presenting the things that these sources have to say in ways that help your argument. And you might find something more generative there that you forgot about. Have you used each of your sources? Um, remember, I challenged you guys to not do the minimum, the four that you have to have, right? And I said, try for six, try for eight. Have you used all of them? If you're finding, wait, there's one source I didn't use, that one might be the key. You could also go back to the drawing board a little bit and find yet another source. Um, you can kind of get down a rabbit hole with that one um, and, and not come back to the essay like you need to, but it is an option. Um, the thing also to ask yourself is, am I being true to what I really think about this? Or are you starting to get persuaded by the opposing argument? That's not a bad thing, okay? Um, you can still continue with the paper even if you've been persuaded, right? That, your, your paper, again, change what the thesis is. Follow where you're going. All right, and then last. Um, what have I said in my counter argument? Um, did I give it a fair shake? How am I writing it to actually support my claims? Those are things that you cover with Dr. White um, in Monday's class. But again, the counter argument is still a way to make your argument stronger. And if you haven't addressed the counter argument enough or the, the opposition to your position enough, that's a way again to add, add context, add more ways of persuasion. And then lastly, ask yourself, what are your assumptions? Are they valid? Are you relying on stereotypes? Are you assuming things? You know what assuming means, right? Um, and how do you address the fact that you are relying on those stereotypes? If you ask yourself these questions really critically and are honest with yourself, try jotting down answers to them. Hopefully you can get, a, get back in the, in the groove of thing and come back to your essay maybe an hour later. You take that break, get that cup of coffee, you come back to it, and hopefully you can get on with the show. All right, that's the lecture. Talk to you guys later. Take care. Bye.